Okay. Um, I think the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is the seven day challenge that we're doing. Um, if you're, if you are on tonight and you have people participating in that, can you kind of like just anybody that's on tonight? Okay. So the thing about this challenge <laughs> is it has, it, it has brought a lot more participation than I anticipated. Like, holy moly. Um, I told Jetty when, when I first saw the concept, I said, we probably need to do this every month in a different, like maybe not exactly the same way every month, but I'm thinking at the end of the month, every month, leading into the following month, we'll issue a like, sort of like we did, looking for 10 people type things, and maybe we'll do a 96 challenge. Maybe if you guys have good ideas about other ways to do, basically what I'm saying is it doesn't have to be a challenge exactly. Mostly what I'm wanting to do is create a group. <laughs> so if, if you guys can think of creative ways that we can get participants to go into a group where we can basically educate them about what we do because I'm using the group as an online pajama party. I'm using that basic, the basic outline. I'm doing a few things different since it's seven days instead of like a two hour structure. But I'm basically doing an online event, gonna give away some prizes, um, gonna basically um, educate them about the company, educate them about the products, spotlight different products, and the ambassadors on there participating is making it interesting too. Um, I, I loaded a video a few minutes ago, and honestly, I haven't gone back to look to see if it actually made it onto the page yet. It wasn't a very long video, like two minutes or something like that, saying that I'm gonna actually start pinning everything at the top, like the day's main objective, I'll pin it to the top. Um, the reason I did a video about that is because some people don't know how to view the, you know, that you, that they'll miss the most important post of the day because they don't realize that they have to click that thing that says view pinned post. So I made a short video that basically explained if you're in this group and you're getting lost in the shuffle, <laughs> which I've had several messages today is why I know this is going on. People are like, I can't find the post that's relevant to me. And so every morning or maybe twice a day, I may pin a different post. I'm going to have to see how tomorrow goes. Um, something that stays at the top. So if it's a person who's at work, doesn't want to like get caught up in the whole reading everything in the group, they can still get the most relevant information of the day. So, the reason I'm making a, uh, any taking any time talking about this is because let me look and see. We issued this challenge. Was it last Wednesday? Maybe last Tuesday? I can't remember. We said we're going to do a challenge, and then we're going to start it on the second, which was yesterday. To, uh, yeah, today's the second, right? Okay, yeah. Sorry, boy. I'm telling you what. Um. It has, okay, the video hasn't completely finished loading. So that will be, make sure you tag your people in that video. That way they're, they understand. There are 1,247 people in the group. And I was like, okay, well, for one thing, I left the group where you didn't have to, um, what, it's like open, closed, secret, or something like that. I didn't make it all the way completely secret because I wanted anybody to be able to add their people to it without having to make a big, you know, like I have to be friends with someone because basically some of my groups that are closed, it requires me to go in there and okay to add them or whatever. By not making it the highest, uh, the, that heightened secrecy level or whatever, I think some people that are on the page probably don't belong to me or us. And that's okay because so far, what I've seen out of the page is sort of blowing my mind. And the cool thing about it is, and I wasn't anticipating <laughs> at all, I wasn't anticipating other people's people putting people in this challenge, or I probably would have said, uh-uh, I'm making it secret. Well, I would have probably messed up hugely there, because what has happened um, is we have it, it, what looks like to an outsider, 
oh my goodness, look at how many people are participating. Okay. I mean, and they are, they actually are participating, but that's way better than this is the deadest group that I'm in. Do you see what I'm saying? Like if there's a great atmosphere in that group and tons of messages. And if you're not already participating this time, if you don't have a, someone participating in the group, that's okay. I'm going to try to make it my goal with your help to come up with something for the butterfly team that at the end of the month, every month, it, it really lent itself to at this, at the end of this last month, because there was a $5 off coupon. So they could get their seven day sample for like 20 or $25, depending on what sample they got instead of 25 or 30. So we're going to try to come up with some other cool ideas that keep, I'm giving you the details so that some of you can actually be creative with me, come up with other ways to get new prospects involved in a group. It doesn't have to be a seven day challenge, but I would like for it to be something that lasts a few days, highlights our company, highlights the products, and gets people um, participating because of the promise of prizes um, and that type of thing. And I don't want it to be just, you know, I want it to be actual prospects, people that you want to talk to, um, that type of thing. So if you don't know what um, exact, basically what we posted was like, I'm looking for 10 people who want to try my products. Um, and, and it was like, gave a few things about what you were looking for in those, those 10 people. If you're interested, message me. And we, we had to go in there and clarify, make sure that they understood that they were actually buying this trial and you want them to have to buy something every time so that it can be people who are actually people who are interested instead of actually people who are nosy. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Like making sense about all this. I'm sort of rambling in a circle. Y'all are probably used to that by now, but anyway, <laughs> I fully anticipate that by the end of this challenge, the butterfly team and many nameless other teams that I don't know who they are, they are, are going to have lots and lots of new ambassadors <laughs> because wow, the, the participation, the people who are messaging me are not people that are, that belong to y'all. I mean, there are some plenty that belong to y'all too, but I'm saying a lot of these people that are sending me private messages are people that I'm like, who, who added you to the group? And they tell me a name and I'm like, I have no idea who that is, but whatever. Okay. So I'm excited about that. And if you have a great idea, make sure that you send it to me, um, before the end of the month, every month so that we can put these new ideas into play. Okay. Um, I think that this, I'm sort of like, projecting here, but I think this is going to be as effective as the online launch parties are. Um, it's just that they're not, it'll be at the end of the month, every month. So you don't want to count on that for how you get your prospects. You need to still be doing your own online launch parties. But so far I'm thinking with, with the participation level that we have in, in the group, basically I underestimated it. Okay. Now I have to tell you guys a cool story. I got to make sure that's what I want to go to next though. Hang on a second. Okay. Yeah. So the girl that cuts my hair, I've known her for a few years now and her name is Kelly. And, um, She's a free spirit, like gypsy soul type person. And she and I kind of feed off of each She has this cool energy. We feed off of each other. I love to get, her, get around her and um, kind of like absorb some of her energy. And she's the same way with me. And anyway, um, a couple of years ago, she had this kind of harebrained idea that she wanted to take an Airstream trailer, gut it, and turn it into a little mini mobile salon. She was going to leave it there at her house so that she could do her regular weekly appointments there on, pro on her property. But she wanted to be able to actually go on site to weddings and other events to where she could do people's hair in, in a contained space where all of her stuff, she has all of her stuff. She doesn't have to, you know, load it all in her car. It would be in this cool Airstream. And I, 
I'm a visionary, so I can see things usually. But as she was describing this Airstream trailer to me, I'm sort of getting it. That was like the very best I could explain this. I'm going, I sort of get that. I mean, when I see an Airstream trailer, Airstream trailer in my mind's eye, I sort of go to this like picnic-y, you know, like rocks on the ground and a lake in the background. Or maybe you went on a road trip, kind of route. Uh, you know, like a Route 66 feel. I mean, I don't know. I get all these images. Well, she transforms this place into like, um, I can't even describe chic, <laughs> but like shabby too. Shabby chic, not really exactly that, but I'm saying it was like all this vintage gorgeousness. She ripped out the actual walls she ripped out the floor, put gorgeous floors in, stained the floors, this beautiful color. There's like velvet on the walls and some sort of tapestry stuff on the ceilings. There's beads hanging everywhere. It's like very carpet bagger. Can't really describe it to you, but uh, I watched it unfold. She would take me out there when I would come over and get my hair cut. She'd take me out there and let me look at the progress. So I got to watch this. I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. This is kind of a fascinating story. She put all of her favorite things in the entire world. Like if she had something beautiful, a beautiful piece of fabric and she loved fabric, she sews. So she had this beautiful, these beautiful tapestries and things and she would m literally take them and make them part of the wall. <laughs> and then she had these like beaded strands of beads and stuff. And she hung them as curtains and, I can't, like, my mind's eye can't even describe to you. I would show you a picture if I could. But the reason I can't show you a picture is filled with all of her favorite things, this trailer burned down. Like, all of her favorite things. And one of, her, one of the things that was in there was um, uh, this, I had done a photo shoot. She did Malia's, Malia, my daughter Malia's hair and makeup. She was going to use Malia in her portfolio because she likes to do makeup and hair. So she did this real eccentric hair and makeup on Malia. And Malia has this face that she can just, mm, mm, and so I took all these gorgeous pictures of her. And um, so she had her, her portfolio also in this trailer. And one of the pictures of Malia, it burned all the way. It was like an eight by 10 and it burned all the way. And all you could still see was the very outline of Malia's face. It cut in, it rotted her hair and it left her shoulders unburned. And right here, it was like this perfect, it looked like you had purposefully burned the entire edges. And then there was like a piece of metal from the trailer, like dropped in the shape of a teardrop, like stuck to it. I mean, it was like, Actually, I looked at it and I cried. I was like, oh, God, the symbolism here and the fact that she and I are so kind of like juju weird. And I was like, oh, that makes me sick to look at. And she, the tears that this lady cried over this trailer um, and all her things that were in it. Well, one of the things that was in this trailer was, <laughs> I'll never forget, I showed up for a hair appointment and she opens this little, like, sealed thing and she says look at this I'm like oh my god is that a hummingbird like it was this perfect actual hummingbird in this little glass case and I was like where did you buy that I mean where do you buy a dead hummingbird and she's like no she says I went up to my uh, to get my Christmas ornaments and she said it was laying there on top of my Christmas ornaments it was like God gave it to it to me it was like a gift for me he knows that only I would appreciate the beauty of a dead hummingbird <laughs> and I'm like Girl, you are a special flavor of crazy. I just love you. I mean, everything about you. And she kept this hummingbird in the trailer, in this little, I mean, glass sanctuary, you know, that was one of her favorite things. And when the trailer burned, like, I would have dreams about it every, say, like every two or three months, I would have dreams about something about her and the trailer burning. And all I could think is that stupid hummingbird burned in there too. Like it was already dead. It what didn't die, but all, I mean, it didn't die in the trailer fire. But all I could think about is of all things that she'll never be able in a million years to replace is that dead hummingbird that she loved so much. <laughs> 
I missed my hair appointment last week. First time I've ever missed an appointment with her. Like I just blanked out. And I text her, I'm so, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I don't know what she, she hadn't even texted me to tell me I missed it or I was running late or whatever. I'm like, maybe I have the days mixed up. So I start texting her. She's like, oh, it's okay. It's no big deal. Well, um, it got rescheduled for today. Last night, Jetty comes walking in from, from outside and he goes, he's holding this thing. It's quivering. His hands quiver. And he goes, look what I caught. I said, Oh my God, <laughs> take that outside. Cause it was a hummingbird. I said, you're going to give that a stroke. You can't make it stop flapping its wings. Take it outside. How did you catch that? And he opens his hands and shows me. I said, Oh my God, you already killed it. He goes, no, I found it. I found it. And I said, Oh my God, that's for Kelly. That's for Kelly. And he's like, what? I said, of all the things I can't get out of my mind in the whole tragedy of her losing that silly trailer is her losing that hummingbird that she thought was a gift from God. That is for Kelly. I'm going to see her tomorrow. So anyway, today I take it. Now I don't have quite the beautiful glass sanctuary that she had for it, but I did have like a glass candy dish and I put all this like kind of like Easter grass, but it's more like angel hair pasta grass stuff in this little glass thing and I put the, uh, a big purple Gerber daisy, artificial Gerber da daisy in there and I lay this hummingbird on it and I'm running behind, like I'm gonna be late for my hair appointment, but I'm, I gotta do this. I put it all in this like crystal candy dish, put it in a sack and I, I go get her this thing that I bought that I could write in and I tell her, here's what I wrote, I read to her, or I wrote to her. Hang on. I said, um, I said, may all the promises of Deuteronomy 30, three through, through 13 be yours. Because she has begun, I want to tell you what she's begun. She has begun this entire, after her trailer burned down, she bought another trailer and she started it and it just wasn't happening. Like she couldn't make her heart do it again. She's like, I'm just so broken. And her, her life up to this point actually has been a picture of miscarriages, countless miscarriages. She finally, she has one boy, but she had countless miscarriages leading up to him. And then she had more miscarriages after him. And I don't know how she even continued down that track. And then when she start, she tells her life, as she tells her life story over our friendship, she's told me her life story. It's like her life has been one Airstream trailer after another. I mean, just like, Oh my God, Kelly, how do you keep going? And, uh, so today when she opened, you know, I go, I had come out, I went to my neighbors today cause I don't have a pool yet and burned myself good and crispy so that I won't be the whitest person in Maui. And by the way, I didn't realize I was burning myself. That's really bad for you, but Oh my Lord, I need a, Whoo! anyway, I left the pool looking exactly like I look when I get out of a pool, like a drowned rat and went straight to my hair appointment. I get there. I hand her her little thing that she reads and it says, God, your God will restore everything you lost. He'll have compassion on you. He'll come back and pick up the pieces from all of the places where you were scattered. No matter how far away you end up, God, your God will get you out of there and bring you back to the land your ancestors once possessed. It will be yours again. He will give you a good life and make you more numerous than your ancestors. God, your God will cut away the thick calluses on your heart and your children's hearts, freeing you to love God, your God, with your whole heart and soul and live, really live. And then it goes on um, with more and more and more promises, which I will actually share in, on the Butterfly page after this call is over so you can actually read through them. But as I was reading through them, I was just like, oh, this is for Kelly. And then I said, now open up, open your present. So she opens it. And as soon as she sees the candy dish, she's like, okay, so now you have to open the candy dish. So she opens it up and like tears just start falling. And she told me, I didn't know this was true for her. And it was true for me. She said, of all the things I lost in that stupid trailer, the one thing I couldn't get over was that I said, I know the hummingbird, me too. I thought, how awful is that? You lost that stupid hummingbird. <laughs> and she's like, I know. She's like, I just couldn't imagine 
I thought it was a gift from God and then it burned. And I just was like, how can that possibly be? And, um, anyway, so, you know, she has her little cry and she's like, I can't believe up in my life. I've seen two dead hummingbirds. She said, the first one was mine, and now you've given me the second one. I said, well, in my entire life, I've seen yours and this one. These are the two dead hummingbirds I've ever seen in my life, even in a hummingbird museum, even like in, you know, a, any tree sanctuary in the world. I've never seen a dead hummingbird, but my husband walked in last night before my hair appointment. It says, here, this hummingbird. I said, I knew it was yours. I said, that's for Kelly. So we're sitting there. She's cutting my hair, and I look like a drowned rat, and I was like, do you have an appointment after you? Cause I don't know if I, you know, uh, so I start kind of like, I need to go places after. So I start slathering on a little bit of makeup so I can look presentable enough. Cause once she fixes your hair, you look kind of weird not to have a little bit of something on your face, you know? So she had me all looking fabulous. And so in a minute that her two fifteen appointment walks in and it's a man and I recognize him. I was like, I know him. He's a doctor in town don't know him well, but I just kind of recognized him. And she quits what she's doing with me and immediately takes her little glass candy dish and she goes, Dale, look at this. And she opens it and she goes, look what she gave me. And just like, I mean, like the nicest man in the world. Like I was just sitting there thinking, oh my God, he's going to think she's nuts. He's going to be like, oh my God, it's a dead bird. But he's like, oh, that is, that is neat. And he takes it just like a doctor and does like a little chest compression. He goes, it's dead. And she said, I know. And he goes, those are the best patients. They don't complain. They never have anything bad to say about you. He starts making these jokes. And so we start laughing. He goes, it's kind of fresh though, Kelly. Well, we had just talked about that right before he got there. I said, I don't know what will happen with that hummingbird. And you probably let it cross your mind too. You're thinking, Oh God, dead hummingbird. Like there's going to be ants and, I don't know what's going to happen, but ooh. And um, anyway, I'm sorry, I'm making this a really long story, but it was like the coolest thing. So uh, he said, he, he said, you know, it's kind of fresh. She said, yeah, we were talking about that. And he goes, well, you need to put a little bit of uh, formaldehyde on it. And she goes, yeah, like, I mean, I don't have formaldehyde laying around. He goes, well, I can get you some formaldehyde. And she's like, you can he goes, yeah, yeah, just come by the office tomorrow. I'll get you some formaldehyde. And she goes, really? What do I do with it? And he goes, well, I'll just give you a little syringe of it and you can like inject it. And he's like pointing under its rib cage. Just inject it a little bit with formaldehyde and it'll mummify it and then it won't decay and all. She's like, I don't think I can do that to it. And he goes, well, just bring it by the office. I'll do it for you. And I'm just sitting there. I'm watching this exchange between the two of them. The nicest man in the world. And the hummingbird fanatic having this conversation, I'm just like, oh, wow, this is so interesting. Well, it was like the shortest haircut I've ever had. We usually will spend the day together. We'll like go get lunch, cut some hair, and then go junking or whatever. But she had a 215, so we didn't. So she texts me after the appointment, and this is what she said. She says to me, I feel like we were cheated. That was way too fast of a visit. I said, yes, I agree. She said, pooey. I said, at least the next appointment was a hummingbird mortician specialist. And she said, well, there's that. And I was like, well, there's that. I thought, what a classic, like, God restoring story. I know the hummingbird sounds cheesy to a lot of you, but if you knew this girl, you would not think it was cheesy to her. You would know how dear when she told me the stupid hummingbird story, and I'm not really calling it stupid because it really touched my heart. When she told it to me the first time, how she knew that that was left there for her by God because she would cherish it, cherish it so much. I remember being completely moved by that story, and that is the reason out of everything, all the expensive things that she had in that trailer, that's the one thing I couldn't get over. So, now why did I tell you all that story tonight? I don't know. I felt like I was supposed to. Well, I have lots of reasons in my head why, but I don't really want to push those reasons on you guys. I sort of feel like maybe some of you are going through some things where you feel like you need um, restoration, <laughs> divine restoration, uh, hummingbird mortician type restoration where somebody would come in and you'd be like, wow. 
I could have never predicted that. Wow. One other thing I want to tell you about my week, as if that was not a weird enough story, is um, the story is about my week, but it really dates back to, I don't know, probably months ago that I was feeling led that I was supposed to step out in a really odd ministry that I've, the likes of which I've not seen before. And I didn't know anything about what I was supposed to do except that I felt led to do it. And I sort of stuck my toe in the water here a while back. Um, sort of, like che cheapened it and did something that I sort of thought was what I was supposed to be doing. And I got met with enough resistance about it that it made me gun shy to do the big thing I felt I was being called to do. In fact, I was like, oh God, if people are gonna act like that about it, I'm living in a really small town. If people are gonna act like that, I'm not sure. I mean, like break out in a cold sweat every time I think about it. And so here's the answer, here's what I said to God. I said, every time he would bring it to my mind, and by the way, by my bringing it to my mind, he got to the point where it wasn't like, it wasn't like sort of, I think I have an inkling that I should do something. People were private messaging me that I, people that I don't know and still don't know these people asking me, Hey, have you ever considered countless people now, literally countless people, Jenny can attest to this. I say, listen to this. We'd lay in bed. Somebody else asking me if I'm, if I've ever considered, have you ever thought about, Hey, how has, has God ever led you to do such and such and such? And to the point that it got to almost the embarrassing point that I hadn't already done it. And so I finally, this past week, stepped into it. Uh, just a few days ago, actually. And when I did, like, first of all, let me tell you what, the main reason why I didn't. Is because, because I'd already stuck my toe in and got criticized. And that hurt. And then... The other reason I didn't was because I didn't understand all of the, you know, when you send an invite to people and it has the who, what, where, when, and all the whys and the hows and all that, I couldn't picture it in my mind. I still can't. Like, just like I was telling you about Kelly's trailer, she could see the big picture and I, I felt comforted that she could see it. I, so I'm like, yeah, get after it, girl. That's awesome. But like, whatever this is that God was calling me into, I was like, that is so muddy. I can't see it. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And um, so I'm not, this is, I hope you don't misunderstand me, think I'm bragging on myself because I, tell, I told God repeatedly, I will later. Over and over, I said, I will. I promise I will. I just don't know enough about it to do it yet. Once I finally was obedient to what I was supposed to be doing, I can't explain to you the ways that God has knocked down walls for me that I had put up myself and walls that other people have put up and I was obeying their walls. And have you ever done that? Have you ever let, let other people put a wall in front of you and instead of just opening the door that's in the stupid wall and walking through it, you allow them to build a wall in front of you? This implies to our business so much, by the way, because as much as I consider what I do a ministry, or I should say this, as much as what I consider Plexus, if Plexus isn't a ministry in your life, it's because you just haven't taken it, taken it on that way yet. If it's still a business to you, that's great, but oh my God. God is in this business in the biggest way that I can explain to the point that I almost believe that these products are literally, let's say, let's say we have an ear problem, this kind of ear problem. I don't know. I can't hear the voice of God anymore. Only the thing is, or maybe I never could. I don't think I can hear the voice of God. I can't hear him calling me. Only the thing is, I don't feel that that's our problem near as much as we have like brain fog clarity issues we don't we're so focused on all these things that sugar addiction causes in our life 
sugar, processed food addictions, all these things in our life that we allow us to cloud. Well, let me say this. Study fluoride for a little while. The stuff that you put in your mouth every day, study the dangers of what that is to you. Type in fluoride toxicity and what it does to your um, pineal gland, your third eye, your ability to have um, communication with anything extrasensory, basically um, for the spirit, the spirit to be able to talk to you. And I think sugar is just as toxic as that. It's just that people like sugar enough that they want to ignore that. It's those ways in which that I think Plexus, I think God is using Plexus in those ways to get us well. What is the third eye? Somebody said, what is the third eye? Um, it's, a, it's sort of a... It's a word for, for, it's not really literally a third eye. Like it's the pineal gland in the brain. It's like um, mother's intuition or when you sort of have a hunch about something and you don't know why, they usually connect that with the pineal gland. It gives you, yeah, it's like extrasensory perception. It's ESP, only not in a weird kind of way it's really actually something we, that we have yeah pineal p-i-n-e-a-l i think it is and fluoride oh y'all are really gonna think i'm nuts after i get finished with this because fluoride will actually cal calcify your pineal gland to where i think that i think i've read before that it hitler put it in the water source in our water source too Hitler put it in the water source to make his people more submissive to everything that he had to say. It makes you a robot. And we put it in our mouth every day and brush our teeth with it. Now, you can take that, take that and 50 cents and you can go buy yourself a half a candy bar. I mean, so you can do, do with that what you want. But I truly believe that. And I've actually quit using fluoride toothpaste because of it. Um, I'd be hard pressed to convince most people of it, but I'm just telling you, I think sugar has that same kind of stronghold on us. And I feel like the spirit of God is using this company to prepare people for huge ministries, but he has to be able to communicate with us in order to get it done. I know that was a great big load of information to put on some of you people who are like, all I wanted to know was the power of three. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> But I'm just telling you, I feel like if I don't say these things that I feel, I feel like I'm doing the same thing. I will later. I will later. I promise I will later. So if Plexus is in a ministry, by the way, I watched the recording of last week's. I watched it because one person had my attention through the whole recording. And I don't know who this person was. And that this person may be on the call again tonight. And I'm fine with that. I, I can't see their face if they are. But I remember I watched the recording because of the shock. <laughs> of, and I couldn't, I couldn't read this person at all. Like I was thinking, are they shocked? Are they upset? Whatever. I have no idea what they were thinking. But I couldn't quit watching the recording. And I almost let the recording be that wall. Okay, watching the recording back, I almost let the recording be the wall that I wouldn't open the door and walk back through because I was like, I think I scared that person. They're going to tell all their friends, don't get on her Zoom call, she's nuts. Um, you know, I, I thought, oh my God, this is going to be, this is going to be bad. People are going to start saying, this is a cult. Don't get involved with her. She's crazy. Whatever, whatever. But I feel, I'm going to tell you all what I think anyway. I feel like we have to be able, you know, how Plexus detoxes us and people go through these amazing, like, mental clarity. I mean, people get mental clarity with this company. And that's one of the main things that makes sense with me, why God would really be moving through a company that allows people to really get fluid with his spirit. And if it was just me, I would think, well, I'm sort of inclined that way anyway. I'm kind of different. I'm like Kelly. I'm all getting sobby about a hummingbird, whatever. But the thing is, it's not just me. 
it's pretty like plexus universal where I see a lot of people who are coming, they're becoming like more, more, uh, one with the spirit about things. They are hungry for knowledge. Um, I truly actually believe that there's about to be some huge shift in the spirit realm. And I think our generation, whatever age you are, I think if you're a lot living and breathing right now, we're going to get to witness it. And I don't believe for a second that it's anything scary. I, I mean, I think it's going to be something that's amazing, but I don't think it's anything we should be fearful of. So I need to get that out there too, because I don't want people after I message people start messaging or after I get off of this and people are like, Oh my God, what do you think is going to happen? It's not anything that I think is going to be bad news. I just think that there's going to be something amazing happen. Maybe pretty soon. That's just what my spirit feels like is the truth. And I think God is really using, I'm not saying plexus is his only Avenue. I'm just saying, uh, this is a great Avenue to build, be building up a, a, like a tribe of leaders of people who can tune into like, imagine if you, if you've never really thought about this before, imagine like a CB radio where he's really wanting us on his frequency. He's saying, I need y'all all on channel 23 or whatever. I don't know how they do that. Jetty could correct me. He's probably laughing, but I need y'all to all go to the same frequency to where you can tune in and hear what I'm trying to say right now. And we could all be tuned in and basically be one. That's why I thought it was so cool that this seven day challenge has a bunch of, like, like I said, what did I say? 1200 something people on it. Those are not all our people. Those are, it's, it's big. It's huge. And the thing is, I see a lot of the jewels talking about things. Maybe they're not all as, um, I do think that many of them are as, I don't want to speak crazy over myself. Somebody told me the other day, quit saying you're crazy. Perceived as crazy. I don't actually think I am crazy, but I think many of the jewels are probably on the same CB channel as me. And they don't want to be perceived as crazy as I might be being perceived. And therefore they're not being quite as open about it, or maybe they are feeling it and don't quite understand what's going on yet, but they're talking about it. They're like, have you noticed? Have you seen this? Are you following this ministry page? Do you follow this prophet? I'm going to tell you something. My brother died almost exactly nine years ago. Like yesterday was the nine year anniversary of when he collapsed and we put him in the hospital. And then 13 days later or 12 days later, he was dead. And why did I start to tell that? If you had told me nine years ago before that happened to me that I would ever even care about being in tune with anything, including the church I go to or opening my Bible, I would have been like, I don't know, maybe like when I get old, like my uncle who goes to church, that's how I felt about church, um, religion. That's how I felt about I mean, I believe in God, but I'm saying huge strides in my life in the last, and I've got to read all these chat messages because now y'all really got my inter my um, curiosity. Yeah, other people are saying they feel it too. And I know a lot of you do feel it because I know a lot of you on this call are giving me the freedom to be this kind of nuts because a lot of you already have messaged me about these types of things. And I appreciate your encouragement, your obedience, your willing spirits to be part of something like this. And mostly I appreciate that your willingness to share your heart on it because that makes me be more courageous. And then I can encourage you to be more courageous and then we can step out on into these things together. Let me make sure there's anything else that I want to talk to you guys about tonight. I've written down complete surrender. I'm going to let you meditate on what that means in your life if you have not completely surrendered. I think that's something we have to almost do every day. But So I think what I'm going to do tonight, and I'm going to pray over everybody right now because I feel my spirit just, Whoa! I mean, Whatever they say, like, wide open, she's wide open. <laughs> because I'm going to bust open at the seams if I don't spray, pray over you guys right now. So, Lord, 
You're the one who created every single one of us, even if we have not submitted to you, even if we don't believe in you, you still created us. And you know us as you know yourself. You know every single intricate detail of us. Like the Bible says, you know how many hairs are on our head. And Lord, I just, I feel such anticipation right now in my spirit. I've felt it for the past several days. I've felt it for weeks, but I really feel it rising up in me in the last two, three, four days. And whatever that is, Lord, like if that's a fire, just keep blowing on it like the oxygen just making it flame and flame. And I pray that you're doing that in every single person's life that's listening to this. Whether they're on this call live or not, or if they're just listening to the recording of it, Lord, I don't care. I pray, I know already that everyone who is supposed to hear this call will be hearing this call. Lord, I pray over my friend Kelly and for her willingness to always be tuned into your spirit in her life. I pray over her new venture, this new salon she has going on. I lift that up to you, Lord, because like she says, art heals people. And that is what she is really striving for. And I'm excited for her about that. I pray that every single day you remind her that you created her so that she can rest in that when she feels nuts. <laughs> I pray that over myself too. I pray it over anybody who feels that. I pray over lonely hearts in this group, on my team, anybody who feels lonely or out of place, Lord, I ask that you just come in and give them such peace that you have them exactly where they need to be. So grateful that you mold us into exactly what we need to be. And when we're going through painful things and we're going through trials and there are things with our kids and things with our parents and people that we really care about in our lives and, and life seems all out of whack, Remind the spirit inside us, Lord, that that is exactly what we have to do for our soul to evolve and change and grow and bloom into what you have for us. I pray that we, Plexus Ambassadors as a whole, will be this enormous blessing on people's lives and draw people near to you, Lord. I pray that, you, that there's nothing that you can do to shut our mouths about the products. I mean, nothing that anyone can do, nothing that someone else can do, that people can do. That's the thing. Nothing that people can do will shut our mouths because we are so overwhelmed. We're so overwhelmed with what you have in store for all of us in store for everyone that we come in contact with. And when we do come in contact with people, make us extra super sensitive to the fact that you put them in our path for a reason and we better not mess it up. Mostly, we better not just keep quiet. Why would you put them there in all their pain, in all of their misery, in all of their circumstances, and their daily schedules, in all of their misfit feelings? when we could have this huge impact on them by shining your light. That's what we're here for anyway. Show us how to be brave. Show us how to shine our light. Show us how to impact people's lives for your kingdom. Bring them to us like by the drones. And I promise, and I pray that everyone on this call promises that when you bring them and you put them in my face, that I will open my mouth. That I won't let fear be the boss of the kingdom of God. Fear is not the boss of the kingdom of God. Love is the boss. And you are love. I pray over every family 
every family situation that makes you distracted or brings you pain, breakups, problems at schools with your kids, anything, anything that can be a distraction to what you're supposed to be doing. And I'm not talking about your business. I'm saying your business, if your business is your business, but I'm talking about your business as your ministry, I'm saying show us when it's a distraction, Lord, so that we can be keenly aware to just go, that is a distraction. And also, most importantly, <laughs> to know what we're supposed to do with the distraction, and that is to turn around and lay it back down at your feet. Oh, Lord, why is that a struggle for us? So many willing hearts represented here tonight. I mean, why else would they get on a Wednesday night call to listen to something like this, Lord? They're willing. They're open. They're willing. Many of them may be hurting. And I just ask that you don't give them a Band-Aid. I ask that you wash them with love and mercy and grace that is so overwhelming that they can't help but open their mouth about that. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name because we are so grateful. We're grateful for the sacrifice that he was for us so we don't have to pay the price for who we are. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. I feel dizzy. I always feel dizzy after praying on Wednesday nights. So, okay. Let me see if there's any, any uh, questions on this chat thing. <laughs> Somebody told me I better put body cream on my sunburn. <laughs> I've been putting fast relief on there. Look at that. It's bad, y'all. I thought I was going to look a little better in a tube top, and all I ended up, like I'm going to wear a tube top. I'm joking, by the way. I thought I was going to look a little bit better and not have such meaty-looking shoulders, and I ended up with a line that's going to look like I'm wearing a halter if I do wear a sundress. So that's for sure. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, look at her white halter top and her red skin. Okay. Woo! Hang on a second. I'm going to check a text message real quick and make sure. Okay, I'm making sure anybody doesn't have anything that they want me to talk about on this call. I always hate hanging up thinking somebody has a question. If somebody does have a question, I can't see all of your faces, but oh, um, unmute your th your thing, and I'll be happy to take questions real quick. I know I've kept you guys on here almost an hour. Anybody? Anybody? If anybody feels what I'm feeling or knows what I'm talking about, I'd be happy to hear about that too. Laura, I just wanted to thank everybody um, that was on the call last week that heard me pray about my grandma or talk about my grandma and just wanted to thank everybody, my sister and I, wanted to thank everybody um, for the prayers and for her peaceful passing. Yes, love you girl. Erin's grandma, 100 years old, she passed away. If you don't, if you weren't on the call before, Grandma Cleo passed away. And it, services are Saturday, true? Yeah. We, we'll be uh, holding your family. Aaron, and for those of you who don't know, I don't know how they fall on your screen, but Aaron <laughs> and Christine, but she's Dilly on here if, you, if you're looking at names. Aaron and Dilly are sisters. And, um, uh, they're talking about their their grandmother. Is that your did you is that your dad's? It's your dad's mom, right? Okay, yeah, I thought I had that all straight. Okay, anybody else have any questions, thoughts, concerns? I look like I'm I'm look like I'm fixing to land a spaceship that's about to land. Can y'all see my face? It is glow. It's sending. I'm sending y'all love vibes. That's why my face is so red. It's because it's love vibes. Can you see that? I can I can see the glowingness. And it's not oil on my face. It's like red. Okay, I'll shut up. Anybody else have anything they want to say? <laughs> Lori? Yes. It's Katina. And yes. I have a couple of things that the Holy Spirit just won't let me go and I want to talk to you about. Um, but one of them been, I believe it was last week or maybe the week before, when Erin had said that she had started tithing on her income from Plexus before she actually got the income the way I was understanding it out of her other job paycheck. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit just wanted me to tell people there is tithing and that is learning 
to give your 10% to God, but there also is giving first fruits. Oh yeah. Yeah. Tell us about that. And so that is what Aaron did was give her first fruits. So that's a whole nother level that you go up in tithing is giving God first fruits. And that can be tithing, but also many other things in your life. So that's something I just want to say, that's what she did. That's why God reached it to her immediately because she gave first fruits. And then go ahead. Sorry. Um, the other thing is, is that, um, I don't think it's any accident that, um, the leaders retreat is going to be in Washington DC area. I believe that God has shown me more than once when I was praying that he's going to send a tribe of people through plexus there to pray. Okay. And that you're supposed to organize Lord, that you're supposed to help organize prayer groups to come on corners and speak out and bring life to our country. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't say it was like you said in your heart. It wasn't just an accident that he put all these Christians in plexus. He has a greater purpose than what we can possibly imagine. And one of them there is sending to our state capital a massive of Christians to have a good time, but also to gather together and pray. Okay. Woo. <laughs> Okay. I appreciate you sharing that. I'm ready. Woo. And I couldn't agree more. Yeah, it is. There's a purpose. It's a greater plan. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Woo. Well, I'm so glad so many of you decided to get on here tonight. I'm going to put the recording on the butterfly page. Um, I'm going to put the Deuteronomy thing that I sent, that I gave to Kelly. And uh, if anybody has any questions about the first part that I talked about, about the seven day challenge, or if you have any suggestions about how to implement a challenge every month, because I think it's going to be huge for our team. I feel like our team, this is, I feel like our team is about to grow. I'm talking about, times a hundred I think it's gonna happen in the next six months now I mean here we are this is September 2nd 2015 just sit back and watch this is what I believe will happen our team this team will go times a hundred and I believe I don't know for sure exactly what what ways God is gonna do it I don't tr I don't I don't second guess him I mean like who I heard a pastor say one time or uh, actually some man who was visiting at a church, somebody was saying, Oh, um, don't be worried. Don't be scared of the fruits of the spirit. Don't be scared of, um, I guess it's something they tell each other in regards to, uh, spiritual gifts being put on your life. When someone basically begins to submit, if they're scared that, you know, the Holy spirit will just come inside them and completely, overtake their body like a ghost or something like that. I don't know what people are afraid of. I have no idea what makes people say, Oh, the Holy spirit is a gentleman. The Holy spirit is a gentleman. He will never, whatever. And heard this pastor say, I hear people say all the time that the Holy spirit is a gentleman. I personally prefer not to tell the Holy spirit what he is. And I'm like, Whoa. Oh my gosh, because I, he said, I think he said, he's like, there's no word in scripture that says he's a gentleman. If he wants to basically, and I feel like I'm not trying to scare anybody off from the Holy Spirit, quite the opposite of that. I feel like the Holy Spirit is about to ha inhabit the lives of the willing in a way that we've like, it's never been written about in ways that we're going to go, oh my God, oh my God, we're going to be, we're going to say things like I've been saying this group that I started that metamorphosis group. That's the thing that I did this last week that I finally submitted and said, I'll do it. I don't think it, I think it's the beginning of it. I think it's nowhere near what it's going to be, what I see God's going to do with it. But I feel like there's going to be this overwhelming, amazing, uh, come out of ministries like that, that are out of the box to where we don't put it, him in a box where we say, you know what? literally this is yours. I don't have any idea to tell. I'm not going to tell you you're a gentleman because I don't know what you are. I don't pretend 
to put you and tell you what you can and you can't do because God is capable of whatever God sees fit. And I feel like he's waiting for people, tribes of people, to stand up and be like, just use me, be my arms, be my legs. Um, literally use my vocal cords to speak your message. And as this all begin, will begin to come to fruition, I, I foresee major things happening in the spirit realm that we'll, we'll be able to see as a reflection in the natural. I think we'll see things. Um, sorry, these are, these are things that are just coming to me right now. I think that we will see things to where like one of the, the, the videos that I made in that group where I said the Holy Spirit, once you have the Holy Spirit living inside you, and then you're like, but I don't have powers. And I mean, I'm going to tell you, I come from a Baptist background and I have nothing. So I'm not criticizing, ba criticizing anybody's denomination, but I'm saying Baptist background are pretty much sit down and sh 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 don't do this. That's disrespectful. Now I'm already seeing that make a huge turnaround to where it's like, no, that's saying, uh, I completely submit. I surrender all these things. Well, what I, what I see, not necessarily at my Baptist church, but what I see from like a Baptist background is, oh, the Holy Spirit lives inside me, but I don't have any powers. And I, all I can think, every time I think about this, I think to myself, it bothers them to think that God would have power in my life once I am a believer. Well, what bothers me? Is anybody who thinks God that you don't have power after God lives in your life like to think that the Holy Spirit lives inside you and that you don't have supernatural powers inside you the reason you don't is because you don't believe that you do that's what I truly believe and I think that that's part of the mental clarity thing where he's gonna be able to communicate with you and you're gonna tune into his little CB radio and you're like oh my god I have powers I can lay my hands on people I have personally witnessed the spoken word at one of my plexus trainings actually overcome someone who had a severe mental death, not deficit mental something that had happened to her in her life, basically to where psychologically she had major, major, it's not, it had nothing to do with deficit because it wasn't an intelligence or smart or whatever problem, but she had psychological issues Probably psychological is what I'm trying to talk about. I don't know the word, and I don't mean to offend. Whatever. She had major problems going on in her life. At a plexus meeting, I started talking about forgiveness, and it, it kind of bonded a friendship between the two of us. And she, I sent her a song one day on a text, and while she listened to the song, God lifted the entire burden off of her life. And she'd had it. She's in her, she's in her 50s. She'd had this since she was a small child. And God lifted this entire burden off of her life. And that was the Holy Spirit. That was like the connection that she and I made was through my spoken word. And then the, the song she listened to, the song I texted her one day, she listened to. She gave me a CD recording of her talking about this. She said she records all her days because she had such a psychological problem that her her psychological problem intruded upon her day so much that she would record her day so that she could keep things all straight. So it was like almost carrying a little pocket recorder. And she, she gave me the CD. She said, this is the day it happened. And I want you to listen. I hope you're not offended by foul language. And I was like, no, I'm not offended. She goes, cause like several things leading up to it. I'm like dropping bombs all the way along. And she said, and all of a sudden, you send me this text message, and as this song is playing, by the way, the song was Glorious Unfolding. She said, it lifted from me this burden that I had had decades. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, he's living inside me. He lives inside her. The revelation knowledge of all of that. I mean, and that's just one of the cool stories I have. I got, oh my, oh my gosh, so many cool stories that once I had the revelation that I have supernatural power because the Spirit that God lives inside me. I'm, if y'all are people that hate church, I do apologize about tonight because I know you're sitting there thinking, oh, my God. But y'all keep tuning back in, so I'm just going to go with it. Okay, I'm going to end this thing for now.
I'm actually sweating for more than one reason, mostly because of my sunburn right now. But y'all have a good night, and I'm going to put this on uh, YouTube for the world to see. I'm going to title it our craziest meeting so far. Bye, guys. Thank you, Katina, for your message. I don't know if you're still, if you're gone. Thank you so much for that.